Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. CARICOM has installed its new Secretary General. This story takes center stage in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Wednesday, 18th August 2021. Details when we return. Hubbard's big promotion is back. Live free for one year. Spend $50 or more in any Hubbard's department and receive a chance to win. Big prizes every month. Property or vehicle insurance for one year. Free internet, cable and data for one year. Free fuel for one year. Free cooking gas for one year. Free electricity for one year. Free drinks for one year. Extra cash account and the big free groceries for one year. Promotion runs from April 1st to September 30th, 2021. Live free for one year with Hubbard in association with Salt. Gas, Flow, Grenadian General Insurance, Cara Brewery, Coca-Cola, Grenada Bottling Company, Grenlec, Communal Cooperative Credit Union, Dutch Lady Milk, Promo, Danny and Supreme. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back. Long-time CARICOM diplomat has taken up her position as CARICOM's first female Secretary General during a virtual installation ceremony on Monday. More in this Gordon Mosley Guyana News Source report. Giving her first address as CARICOM Secretary General, Dr. Barnett thanked regional leaders for placing their confidence in her. And she said she plans to work hard to tackle the issues facing the community. Among those issues, she said, are the aftermath of the recent earthquake in Haiti and the COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on the region. I take up this position today against the backdrop of a devastating earthquake in Haiti the impact of which will be made worse by the rains associated with Tropical Depression Grace, which is already affecting the country. I reiterate the community's condolences with the government and people of Haiti and to the relatives of those who lost lives in this terrible disaster. I also wish a speedy and full recovery to those of those who were injured. Haiti can be assured that the community will do all it can to assist in this time of national crisis. Dr. Barnett said she's taking up her role at a time when the community faces financial and other challenges that must be addressed. The thrust to build resilience against the existential threat of climate change in all its dimensions and the urgency of constructing a recovery from the adverse effects of the COVID-19 pandemic demand our continued focused energy. Even as we address these critical tasks, we cannot afford to neglect youth unemployment, which has led the explosion of the jobless in the wake of COVID-19. And according to the Secretary General, the community also needs to work to address the issues of economic blacklisting and the loss it poses to the community. All of these affect the lives and livelihoods of each and everyone in our community. It is therefore incumbent on all of us to be engaged in finding solutions and taking action to overcome these obstacles in our path to a secure, viable, and ultimately sustainably prosperous community. The new Secretary General acknowledged the contributions made by her predecessor, Ambassador Irwin LaRock, in the integration of the community. And she said his contribution to the community cannot be underscored, since he served as Secretary General for 10 years and Deputy Secretary General for 6 years. Dr. Barnett, who is also an economist, also served as Deputy Secretary General for CARICOM between the years 1997 and 2002 under the chairmanship of Edwin Carrington. Chairman of CARICOM, Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Gaston Brown, urged the new Secretary General to hit the ground running. The CARICOM chairman also praised the work of the outgoing Secretary General, Ambassador Erwin LaRock. At the installation of Dr. Barnett as CARICOM's new Secretary General, Gaston Brown, Antigua and Barbuda's Prime Minister and CARICOM chairman, called for greater cooperation among CARICOM member states as the region battles a number of challenges including the deadly earthquake situation in Haiti and the COVID-19 pandemic, among other issues. As chairman of CARICOM, I believe that the time has come to change the trajectory of Haiti and we must establish measures in collaboration with Haiti's political directorate and the international community that will allow Haiti to make a fundamental change of direction. That is a longer term goal, but 
So now we must bind up our nation's wounds and mobilize assistance to meet the immediate humanitarian needs. I've been in contact with Haiti's Prime Minister, uh, His Excellency Ariel Henry, in recent days, and I have pledged our support uh, for the Haitian people and would have indicated that we continue to stand in solidarity with our Haitian brothers and sisters. In addition to Haiti, many other challenges to the community lie ahead. We are still in the middle of the global COVID pandemic, with countries all over the world experiencing their third, fourth, and fifth waves of infections. In the region, we have to tackle the twin contradictory issues of access to vaccines as well as vaccine hesitancy among our populations. And we must not be daunted by these challenges. You know, we are compelled to triumph over this murderous pandemic. Over in Trinidad, despite the economic shocks due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Trinidad and Tobago economy is doing well. This from Finance Minister Colm Imbert, who criticized the opposition leader for her comments about the central bank governor's performance. More from TV6's Elizabeth Williams. And if I read from the Financial Stability Report, I see that despite COVID, the financial sector remained resilient, even though there was this unprecedented economic shock. The soundness indicators for the banking and insurance industry suggest that the risks related to the pandemic were largely contained. Institutions maintained healthy capital and liquidity buffers while dealing with deterioration in asset quality and profitability ratios. But if I read from the Financial Stability Report, what I see in terms of the performance of the domestic financial sector, which is one of the core functions of the central bank, the central bank, one of its main responsibilities is to manage and supervise financial sector, insurance companies, banks, etc., and make sure there's stability and those sectors are safe and the public is protected. Minister Imbert spoke over some of the effects of the pandemic. It adversely affected pension sector investment portfolios, but asset valuations have since recovered and improved by the end of the year. And again, in the financial stability report, the governor reported that although profitability and asset quality slipped, and this is in the first year of COVID, the performance of the banking sector remained robust in 2020. He said there is an adequate supply of monies in the country's coffers. The insurance industry, when I look at it, was relatively stable in 2020, in spite of the economic shock of COVID. Assets actually expanded by over 2% in 2020 in the insurance sector. He debunked recent statements made by opposition leader Kamala Prasad Bisesa against the central bank governor. The comments of the leader of the opposition were completely baseless, groundless, devoid of fact, and just, I don't know why the, the, the leader of the opposition would launch that attack on the Governor of Central Bank for doing such a good job. Minister Imbert spoke on Monday during the Ministry of Finance's virtual media briefing. Elizabeth Williams, TV6 News. The hurricane season is now upon us, so we as Caribbean people need to remember to think safety and be prepared. Avoid venturing outside during a storm or hurricane, especially if there are strong winds. Rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. As many parents across the country deliberate over the uptake of the only WHO-approved vaccine for children, the Ministry of Health is advising the risk associated with your child contracting the virus considerably outweighs any risk associated with vaccine uptake. 
Over Shitawari Rupnarayan of TV6 News reports. The very welcome gesture in the United States' Pfizer donation to CARICOM territories means, for the first time, there can be vaccine coverage for part of the child population. We want to vaccinate every person between the ages of 12 to 18, regardless of your school status. What does that mean? If you are 12 to 18 and in school, it's open to you. If you are 12 to 18, you are not in school, it is open to you. As the only WHO-approved vaccine for the over-12 age group, TNT begins its Pfizer rollout on Wednesday, exclusively for children, and already many are signaling keen interest. Living Waters community wrote to me this morning. They have 1,500 migrant children they want to vaccinate, and I said, fine, bring them. We'll make a block appointment for you at both Napa and Diwali Nagar when that opens up on Sunday. And I, we will gladly vaccinate those Venezuelan migrant children because it is open to any child between the ages of 12 and 18, regardless of citizenship. The 305,370 doses of the two-shot vaccine can cover over 150,000 persons. Estimates show about 93,000 secondary school-aged children are eligible. For some parents, including vaccinated adults, they describe it as a dicey time, calling the decision-making process to inoculate their children as an incalculably more difficult task. Dr. Roshan Parasram says there are few side effects. Side effects are pain at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle pain, very rare side effects include myocarditis and pericarditis. In the lower limits, there may be as little as one to two cases per million. Myocarditis refers to the inflammation of a heart muscle. But Dr. Joanne Paul, head of the Pediatric Emergency Department at the North Central Regional Health Authority, stresses the rarity of such an event. If we have 100,000 children in terms of secondary school age children who are between 12 and 18, that means it's one-fifth of a person to get myocarditis in terms of if we were to vaccinate all our children between that age. It means that we'd have to vaccinate the entire Caribbean to actually have one case. It's so uncommon. And if, you're, and if it does happen, it's mild. It's also all recovered. University of the West Indies Cave Hill campus will not be requiring mandatory vaccination at this time. The University of the West Indies Cave Hill campus is not in favor of mandatory vaccination for COVID-19. However, campus principal Professor Clive Landis said that vaccines will be made available to students and staff. He made the announcement during the third town hall meeting on COVID-19 vaccines and testing held at the Dighton Griffith Secondary School this evening. I want to say that um, the university is not in favor of mandatory vaccinations. We will not be requiring it. But we're going to make the vaccine available to our students and our staff. Um, and there's going to be a vaccination campaign this Thursday and next Thursday on the campus for all students and all staff. Um, and uh, that will be using the Pfizer vaccine. And uh, I want people to know that um, the university is making that available. Thank you. Also addressing the town hall meeting was clinical medical officer in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Deal Bab, who disclosed that recent figures showed that most of the COVID-19 persons in isolation are unvaccinated. We would not wish for our health system to become overwhelmed. And vaccination is one tool or layer in our preventative measures that can help us to avoid this. Data from our isolation facility at Harrison's Point has shown that the proportion of those admitted to Harrison's Point with COVID-19 who are unvaccinated is higher in comparison to those admitted who have been previously vaccinated. 84% of persons admitted this year have not been vaccinated. The percentage of those fully vaccinated who've had a breakthrough infection is low, only 7%. 
Did you know that your friends and family can now shop at the Food Fair from anywhere in the world and you can receive here in Grenada? The Food Fair and GrenadaMarket.com now make it possible through secure online shopping and personalized customer service. Simply send your loved ones a list of your preferred items or let them fill an online basket and the items will be available for pickup or delivery. Visit GrenadaMarket.com or the foodfair.gd today for more details. The new norm. Spread the news. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.